this was a manga that I made that got published in Japan. But this is not a story of success. Oh boy, I wish it was. This is a cautionary tale of failure with a very unpredictable ending. And oh yeah, I'll tell you all about it later. Because, uh... I gotta go somewhere. I gotta go. I'll see y'all later. Crazy night. I'm back. Wait, I think maybe I sound too muffled in this. One second. Ah, can finally breathe. You can call me Kusanagi. That's my pen name, it's not my real name. In all of my years in Tokyo, I have certainly experienced a lot of ups and downs, but life has taken more of a downward trend for me recently, and I want to change that. But before I say anything, in order to be an effective storyteller, I think I should start from the very beginning. I came from Metro Manila in the Philippines, the land of smiles, seasick, an amazing dish, and singers, as well as people who think they can sing, but they actually can't. Anyways, I love my country. Great nature, great people, awesome food. I grew up there and worked there for a bit, and then I left. I moved to Australia, land of real life Pokemon, Straya. Seriously, it's like playing Pokemon Go, but all the Pokemon just really want to kill you for sport. Great place to be in. Great nature, great people, and they call their Burger King Hungry Jacks. I think that's pretty cool. Anyways, while I was working there, I worked in a large reputable company as an IT analyst slash consultant. Client facing, nine to five working, making a decent living. Life was good. I was living a reasonably laid back life in a laid back country, but all that went away. Long story short, the client had problems and my company could not afford keeping all the people they recruited from overseas. I was essentially bribed to leave my company. I took the money of course, and I hauled my ass out of the company. But when I think about it in hindsight, that period of unemployment came at the perfect time. I wanted to do something more creative. You see, when I was growing up, people would oftentimes tell me that I have a knack for drawing and storytelling. You have a knack for drawing and storytelling. I wasn't the type that drew every day, but people would often praise me every time I did draw something. I would thank them and tell them that I got inspired by the art that I see on shows on TV. It wasn't until high school that I realized that most of the shows that had inspired me to draw were Japanese anime. And it wasn't until university that I got into reading manga. And it wasn't until my unemployment in a foreign land with no financial stability whatsoever that I decided that I would take whatever skills I had, move to Japan, and get published as a mangaka. So naturally, I became an English teacher in Tokyo. Coincidentally, it was April Fool's Day when I landed on the land of the rising sun. And I certainly felt like a fool because I was second-guessing my decision, even though I was already there. I'm sure some of you would be worried too if you had to move by yourself to Japan, but some of the only Japanese phrases you know by heart are Omae wa mo shindeiru and Antabaka. It was definitely nerve wracking, but exciting at the same time. I stayed in a share house with some rather interesting individuals for the first few months, and then I moved into the shoebox that I call my apartment. You know what they say about small apartments? Nope, nobody says anything about small apartments. Anyways, I started working five days a week as an English instructor at a conversation school. And then since I had some dollary dues from my voluntary resignation from my company in Australia, I also began to pay for and study in a Japanese language school five days a week. 
At that point, I felt financially stable enough to survive. So the next thing that I had to tackle was how to get published as a mangaka in Japan. There are several ways of getting published in Japan, and I want to talk more about that in a future episode, but I had a fundamental problem that I had to address. My Japanese was cow dung. Even now, most Japanese publishing companies are only willing to work with people that can write in Japanese. An easier plan B would be to draw the art for a separate writer, but that wasn't for me since I wanted to write my own stories. However, since my Japanese was doo-doo garbage, I was in a pickle. But Google Sensei helped me to find my answer. The Silent Manga Audition, or SMA for short, is a huge project that was initiated by Japanese publishing company Koamix. What it basically is, is that two or three times a year, they hold auditions for artists and writers from around the world who are looking to publish manga in Japan. As its namesake suggests, the manga are required to be silent, without any dialogues to eliminate the language barrier and to make sure that the judging criteria focus solely on the ability to tell stories through art and paneling. And there it was, my ticket into the industry. With enough beginner's luck, I'd get an award on my first submission and I'd be on my way to a serialization. That was a joke. Of course, I knew it was going to be difficult. I already had a lot on my plate. On top of learning Korewa Pendis in the morning and teaching overworked salary men that Sorry for Leito is not a correct phrase in the evenings, I also had to learn and find time to make manga. It was tough and rough, but somehow I managed to submit entries. First entry, failed. Second entry, failed. Third entry, let's just say the third time wasn't the charm. For the fourth entry, I had to enter the Kumamoto round. The Kumamoto round, also known as SMA EX3, was an extra round outside of the normal summer winter audition rotation. And this extra round was extra special because if I remember correctly, this was the first time that Koamix, the publishing company, disclosed their plans to establish a manga village in Kumamoto, birthplace of some of the prominent figures in the manga industry like Oda Ichiro Sensei, the mind behind a little manga series called Juan Piece. Uh, One Piece. Anyways, I submitted my entry and I wouldn't hear anything about the results until about half a year later. And I still remember the feelings I felt that day when I checked the results online. What was for a brief moment a sense of hope turned into disappointment as I made my descent. I did not win the Grand Prix. I was not among the Grand Prix runners-up. As I glanced through the works of these amazing artists, I imagined what it would feel like if I placed among them. Yet the bitter truth of defeat was dawning on me. What the f***? My pen name is in here. My 10-page piece about a girl climbing the steps towards a secluded shrine in Kumamoto while encountering a magical creature got an excellence award. Damn. It finally happened. And then sometime later, I got this published compilation in the mail. This includes all the award-winning entries of the amazing people I was admiring earlier. And it's official. I got published in Japan. Needless to say, I was ecstatic. I was proud. I was finally able to convince myself that I was truly on the right path. With my newfound motivation, I ended up submitting a fun little entry about two rival cats who end up helping each other to reach a magical floating star coin. And that won another award. And on the next audition, I made a manga about how a boogeyman monster helped a boy study calculus through a dream. That got another excellence award. So at this point, I was on a roll. I knew I would eventually get a Grand Prix win. But the truth is, everything went downhill from there. Something happened, and for the sake of privacy, I won't get into the details, but an emergency hit and my once stable financial status went into the red. I didn't have enough to continue my Japanese studies. I made some unfruitful time and monetary investments, and I couldn't really recover from it. I started working six days a week to compensate, but all the stress got to me. I became less productive, couldn't find the energy to exercise, and I indulged in some of the other things that I enjoyed, like video games and food. I gained weight. N no, wait, let me change that. I now weigh like two people. Essentially, I became this degenerate walking piece of bacon that hasn't won any manga award nine entries later.
I have made so many mistakes in this past few years, and that's why I said this is a story of failure. But failure is not my middle name, and although this starts off as a story of failure, it's also a story of hope and undying dreams. I have not given up, not for a single moment, and that's why I want to shake things up in my life and make some positive changes. And it's for that reason that I made this YouTube channel and I started this vlog. Future Kusanagi here, and I am such an idiot. I have put this video off for so long that between the time I shot the footage for the first part of this video, and now, the Trash Taste Boys have come back from their America tour, the second Avatar movie came out, uh, Jimeno died, and Messi has won the World Cup. What? Congrats to Argentina, by the way. I'm such an idiot because I had this genius, big brain idea of making and uploading several videos at once to inaugurate my channel, but I recklessly underestimated how much of an endeavor it would be to make a new channel, let alone plan, shoot, and edit videos. And that's why you're seeing this video more than halfway through December, even though the first couple of scenes were shot over a month ago, and I haven't even done my uh, Christmas shopping. But to be honest, the bigger reason why it took me so long to do this first upload, the biggest obstacle I had to go through was the amalgamation of all my fears. What if I make several mistakes in the edit? What if I upload this and no one sees it? What if I don't make a good first impression? What if people think this is a total piece of what crap? What if people think I'm uninteresting? What if people just call me a walking tub of lard? What if the comments are just full of hate? What if AI becomes self-aware and starts wiping out humankind? Oh no, wait, that's not part of this. What if I put in all this effort and nobody cares about the video? What videos? if people don't subscribe? What if I, what if I run out of content ideas? What if I what burn if I'm out? just wasting my time? What if I don't succeed? I had, I have all these fears, anxieties, insecurities, things that I'm worried about. But that kind of speaks to what this channel is going to be. Oftentimes when I see YouTubers and creators talk about what they do and who they are, they talk in hindsight. Their answers come from a place of comfort, significant achievement, and stability. They've already reached admirable milestones in the paths they have chosen to take. And obviously, I'm not there yet. The goals that I have for this channel are plenty, but they are all aligned with each other. The primary goal is to make a weekly vlog about my experiences and plans that will keep me accountable and make me form positive habits that will help me improve myself so that I can achieve my ultimate goal of being a published mangaka in Japan. I can see a lot of parallels between being a YouTuber and a mangaka, especially in wearing different hats when going through the whole production process of making a manga or a video. I think there are a lot of learning points here. Another goal is to show you one kind of life that someone like me can live in Japan. I can show you different aspects of living in Tokyo from my perspective, anything from the mundane to the exciting and all the in-between things that I find interesting. Hopefully this will propel me to detach my ass cheeks from my chair so that I can walk around and enjoy the sights and sounds of Japan. And another thing I want to be able to do is to inspire others. I want my story to be in real time. I want to take you with me on my journey as a dreamer facing a lot of uncertainty. As someone who's still in the process of applying in my life, the idea that bravery is not the lack of fear, but having the will to push forward in spite of it. And there's one more question that I don't want to find the answer to. What if I don't start this YouTube journey? For this season, I want to work towards completing at least one manga entry for the ongoing silent manga audition that ends in April 2023. If you follow me on my journey, it will feel like it's not just my entry, it's our entry. At the start of this video, I said that this story has an unpredictable ending. And that is definitely true because I don't know where this is all going. But if you subscribe to the idea that people should chase after their dreams, you should also literally subscribe to my channel and strap yourselves in. This is only the beginning. I'll see you all next week. Come out.